Hey guys, uh, so a special day today. We got uh, Bruno Valverde in from Angra and my good buddy Dave Velez over there as well. We're doing some uh, drum stuff today. We're just setting some stuff up here and uh, we're going to try showing you guys some ways how to deal with hi-hat bleed in the snare mic and just try to get uh, that dealt with. Anyway, um, I saw Bruno play with Anger there in Detroit like last year, you remember that? Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a really fun show that like about six people showed up to, which kind of sucked, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wow, the, this kid play fucking drums and it's like, honestly, I'm kind of blown away uh, that we just happened to both be in LA at the time. And so it's like, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's hang out today and um, hopefully get something cool recorded. We're just in the setup phase, so uh, the gnashing of teeth shall begin right now. Uh, right now we're just hooking up the mics, getting them into place, and then uh, when I've got this little sketch pad over here where I'm writing down what cable's getting patched in where, so that way when we go to bring up the DAW, we're not scratching our heads going, what the fuck's going on? So very important you do this. So, I was wondering why all the onstage stands that I have are total dog shit. Like, this one's actually, like, sturdy, and the ones that I have, you barely tighten this, and it breaks, and then it doesn't hold at all. And I want to know, what the fuck is up with that? I think that's a damn fine question. I'm wondering if anybody from onstage is actually watching this video, and maybe they can fill us in. Finally got uh, things figured out here. We've got some inline pads in place as well because the Earthworks signals are a little hot. It's just, you know, just tracking down the bugs and whatnot. But I think we're just about ready to get going here. We're just getting tones. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I want to thank Dave Velez for being just a massive help uh, with Yay. this. He probably saved me at least an hour. So uh, thanks, Dave. You Yay rolled me. in. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So just going to do a, a quick walk around on the kit. So what we're doing here is we got Bruno. He's going to kind of demonstrate to us um, how we can help avoid a lot of hi-hat bleed into the snare mic. So I was actually checking out Instagram last night and uh, Nolly had posted something up I thought was kind of cool, which was using the Earthworks kick mic as a snare mic. And um, I thought that was kind of a neat idea. So I thought, let's give it a shot. We've got that here. So um, I already have Bruno and uh, Dave coming in today. So I figured, let's try to. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you guys a few ways to help get rid of that horrible, horrible hi-hat bleed. So on the overheads here, we've got the Earthworks SR25s. They're absolutely stellar. The Tom mics are the Earthworks DM20s. Been using these for the last couple of years. They are just simply spectacular. Um, I remember they, I was pretty much the first metal guy that got to try out the Earthworks stuff. They didn't really know if it was going to work. They're more used to using them for jazz and that sort of thing. And uh, you know, we mic'd them up and turned out to be probably the best damn drum mics I've ever heard in my life. And on the snare drum, we've got the SR20 LS, which is actually a kick drum mic, but always take good suggestions where you can get them. So we've been trying this out and it's working pretty well. And down here, we've got one of my absolute favorite secret weapons, and I'm really overdue for doing a, a, just a demo on these, is the Sullivan Subkick mic. This thing is phenomenal. I am an absolutely massive fan of these things. And on the bass drum with no light down here at all, so I'm gonna crank this up. It's probably really gonna be a really noisy shot is the Lewitt Rex mic. This is a dual element kick mic. It's got a condenser and a dynamic, and they're lined up perfectly in phase, and it's fucking phenomenal. For room mics, we've got the Jay-Z V67 mics up in the corners, and uh, these have been sounding pretty damn amazing. Uh, we love them on the piano, and so far on dr drum room, uh, I think these are turning out just a little bit better than we had hoped. Dave Velez over here, he's been a huge fan of the show for a couple of years now. Um, he's been just being a massive help today on this. So thank you very much, Dave. Very much appreciate it. What do you think, man? What do you think of tones we're getting so far? It sounds fucking fantastic. You gotta show him the snare, show him the snare. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is Dave's snare, right, I forgot this. <laughs> oh, the, the snare drum is a uh, Ludwig 14 by eight copper phonic. I have been dreaming of getting one of these snares forever. Uh, it actually costs more than my truck, but uh, thanks to Sweetwater, I got it for uh, Low, low price of uh, three payments of $299. Thank you, Sweetwater. So getting the hi-hat out of the snare mic is kind of an art unto itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys uh, what we got going on here. We've got it, actually got the uh, snare mic backed off from the snare a fair amount. There's like four fingers distance there. That's quite a bit. Usually I've got the snare mic just, you know, almost barely over the rim. But we're going to show you guys just how much uh, hi-hat bleed we can get here and how much we can get away with and how we can deal with it in post. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple different techniques you can use while tracking the drummer 
and just how the drummer can help you guys uh, keep that bleed under control and keep it reasonable. First thing we can do here is we're going to show what happens when the drummer just plays the skin and doesn't play rim shots on the snare and show just how much more hat bleed that creates. Okay, so we have that four finger space on the snare mic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that down and get a little closer to the drum as well. We'll get less hats this way as well, but it's going to change the sound of the drum, especially if we bring that in a little bit. And we're gonna show you guys exactly what happens. So it really becomes a balance of how far away can we get that mic from the drum without picking up too much of this. It really becomes a, a case of what are we gonna do? And the thing is, if we wanna compress it later, that really becomes a huge factor because you're gonna be turning up that hi-hat as well. All right, so next up, we're gonna swap out the Earthworks for the classic 57 and let you guys have a listen to that as well. And we can see just how much of a difference that stair mic's gonna make in terms of not only tone, but how much bleed it picks up as well. I'm just gonna get this a little bit over the rim in the classic position and see where we go. So we brought in the Earthworks mic again, and we backed it off a little bit. It's still over the rim. Uh, we're about maybe two and a half finger widths from the from the head, and we're going to add a little bit of that classic uh, 1176 compression onto the snare, and that's going to get us a really familiar sound. And hopefully, we can compress hard enough and not get too much of the hat into that mic. Okay, it's the next day, it's 10.55 a.m. and Warren's gonna be here at noon uh, to shoot a bunch of stuff, so I have to get this done pretty fucking quick. So this will be kind of the uh, short and to the point video. But what we've got here are, are five different takes, all with uh, varying degrees 
of changes on the snare drum. I'm just going to go over this real quick with you. You can hear the type of bleed going on. Um, these are all unmixed, and I'm pretty happy with the result. There's no processing going on those mics whatsoever. That's just the raw sound of the earthworks on the overheads and the, the, the close mics on the drums. The kick is a Lewitt and a Solomon sub kick. And uh, we've got those wonderful Jay-Z mics on the room. Yeah, we've, we've mixed from the drummer's perspective. We originally tracked, uh, but from the audience perspective, it just fucks me up too much. I, I like mixing from the drummer's perspective so you can play air drums. Of course, I don't think I'll ever be able to keep up with Bruno, but that's, uh, that's beside the point. Anyway, let's take a listen just what's going on here on the close mics real quick, and um, I, can, I can run you through this. So, so this is like traditional just playing the skin and not the rim shot. And the big difference in here is gain on the mic. When you're playing the skin, the drum is much quieter. So you have to turn the gain up. But when you turn that gain up, you're not only turning up the snare, you're also turning up the hi-hat. Take a listen here. Now, it is a fatter sound, but it's not going to quite give us the crack we're going to look for, especially if we want it to cut through a mix. Now, here's the mic in the same position played with rim shots, and you can hear how much more attack we get on the drum. Especially when he opens up that hi-hat, you can really hear the difference. It's night and day because we've turned the mic down because the drum is that much louder. So uh, that's why I really prefer it when a drummer records with rim shots. Uh, I've definitely run into a few occasions where the drummer would be like, uh, I've never done that before. It's like, okay, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we record in two weeks and go? you go home and practice your ass off at this in the meantime. And um, usually we wind up getting some pretty good results. Uh, I always find, you know, if you've got a lot of hi-hat bleed... Yeah, you know, it's generally because the drummer's not playing rim shots and hasn't done it, and you're going to wind up having to replace them with a sample. And uh, let's face it, everybody's doing that these days, and it's getting a little boring. Uh, the other thing is, to really minimize the bleed, we can move the mic in closer. It's a little bit muffled sounding because you get proximity effect. Remember, we're working with cardioid and hypercardioid mics, and the closer you get, you get that proximity effect. It gives it a bit of thump, but I think we're losing a lot of the top end in the process. We go back to the where the mic's backed off a little. It's much crisper, and honestly, it's not going to take that much EQ to get it or sit really great in a mix. I mean, like, just raw mics here. We mute that. That's our room mics. That's uh, sounding pretty damn good. Now, uh, just uh, for comparison here, we also brought in the traditional SM57 just to hear what's going on. And this is a much, much duller sound. This is a sound we are all very much familiar with. There might even be a little less bleed than the Earthworks mic. But the trade-off here is you're going to have to add a lot more top end EQ to get that kind of snap that's on the Earthworks. Because it's a much duller mic. And when, the thing is, when you turn up the treble, you're not only turning up the treble on the snare, you're turning up the treble on the hi-hat. And that's why we wind up with a lot of mixes when people are recording real drums, especially when they're first starting out, that uh, we wind up with a case of lead hi-hat in the mix because they just crank the 10K right up. Because when they mic that snare, it's not giving them the sound that they're looking for. 
Now, uh, here's uh, here's what happens when you start adding compression. Here's the Earthworks run through an 1176 compressor. And, uh, you know, this is a very typical sig- signal chain, except it would usually be a 57 and, an, and a uh, 1176. But here's it with the Earthworks. There's a little bit more hi-hat bleed than you would hear here. But you hear just hear the difference in the transient. Once again, this is with that Earthworks mic. Now, I don't know if Bruno changed the beat here. No, you're hearing a lot more ghost notes now. There's a little bit more hi-hat. Let's hear that in the mix, and let's hear how much more uh, the, the ghost notes come out with that 1176 on the snare. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. So... The transient, the the initial smack of the drum's been flattened out a little bit, and we've brought up the ghost notes a tiny bit as well. Uh, this is a very familiar sound you're going to hear on a lot of records because the 76 is so damn popular. You can also bring that fader up a bit. But now we're hearing that hi-hat po- poke out a bit. A lot of times the uh, snare mic becomes the unintentional hi-hat mic. Uh, Let's go back here to the the snare backed off. That just jumps right out. See, if I was going to do this in software, I might want to try, you know, a 76 or like an SSL channel or something like that and just add a little bit of compression because I think this snare is sounding pretty damn awesome right there on this section. Let's try something here. Uh, Let's go SSL. We're going to go with the uh, Waves SSL uh, channel mono. I'm just going to add a little bit of high end onto the snare. It doesn't need much. Maybe take out a bit of mids, add in a little bit of bottom. Let's try a little 10K here. There we go. There's some thunk. I think we're kind of good right there. Let's try a little compression. About four to one ratio. You hear that fast attack. Let's pull that back a bit. A, B it. And in the mix. We'll go in and out. So this is just real minimal processing. We've already got the snare just really happening. And on, just a little bit of spank. Keep in mind, Bruno is an absolute world-class drummer. Uh, he's got a he, he, he's an incredibly gifted musician, and he can just make that snare drum sound amazing. Um, we had Dave try out a little bit, and he's got a little bit more ring in his snare. You definitely have to work a lot harder to get it sounding on par with this. But this just goes to show what cl- a little bit of clever mic placement can do. And again, if we go back to the to the skin sound. I like that smack. A 
lot more hi-hat there, especially when he opens it up. If we go to the 57, it's still really dull. You're going to have to crank that 10K way up. Get that kind of uh, action. That's definitely a, a sound a lot of people are used to hearing. If we put that back on the uh, on the earthworks, it's going to be way too much. Just goes to show how much of a difference the mic will make. So, yeah, I think the uh, the earthworks is a pretty serious alternative to that fifty seven. Anyway, just to make things interesting, I'm going to make all these tracks available for download. You guys can follow the link in the description below. And you can check out this on your own system instead of just over YouTube and hearing, you know, the YouTube squash compression on the audio. You can listen to the unaltered WAV files and listen to it yourself. And if you found this video useful, please hit that subscribe button. It would do me a huge favor. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you guys later. And I hope to see you at the URM Summit on Wednesday. Until then, take it easy.